Uh, let's get back to the medical side of all this and bring in Dr. Kate Talenko. Uh, doctor, thank you for being here. I want to get first to this issue of face masks. The CDC recommends that Americans wear face masks voluntarily in public. So if I go walk my dog or I just want to walk down the street and back, should I be wearing a mask? So whether or not to wear face masks in public depends a lot on the type of housing you live in and the density of your neighborhood. So if you have to pass through a shared corridor, stairwell, or elevator, I would definitely recommend wearing a mask because we're now finding out that the aerosol aerosolized virus can hang in the air for three hours or more. And as far as walking around in your neighborhood, if it's an urban area where you're going to be passing a lot of people, definitely wear a mask. If it's a more residential rural area and you can stay well out of uh, six feet range, then you don't have to wear a mask. But of course, if you enter a store, you should definitely wear a mask because the whole issue is that of ventilation and the, the, the aerosolized particles being able to be, be swept away. And it's also important to note that you need to be very careful when you remove your mask not to, to touch the outer side because that's the side that might be infected with virus. So a lot of people can't get their hands on a mask, doctor. So how effective are the homemade remedies, the bandanas, the scarves that cover your nose and mouth? Are they really realistically effective? So our research institutions are now studying these homemade masks, and they are less effective mm. on protecting you from virus, but they are more effective in protecting other people from you. So the idea is that my mask protects you and your mask protects me. So wearing a bandana could definitely help protect other people that you come in contact with. So it's definitely worth doing. Something better than nothing. All right, Dr. Kate, uh, we've been asking our viewers to send in their questions, and here is the first one. Uh, Sharon asks, what over-the-counter over counter meds really helped them? Did they, use, they, uh, did they use Tylenol for the fever, cough medicine, soup tea? Uh, what the, they were prescribed meds to use at home. Uh, the, the viewer says, we are concerned there won't be enough meds to help people. How effective are those meds, uh, essentially, doctor? Well, certainly for a fever, you know, Tylenol will help. There's some concern about ibuprofen, that it might upregulate the, the ACE receptors that the virus uses to get into the cell. So we're asking people to, to avoid that, but aware that this is more of a theoretical concern than something that's been directly observed. And we, we do know there is a shortage of medications in the U.S., both in hospitals and at the pharmacy level. And, you know, one thing I think would be very important to do would be to, to use the Defense Product Production Act to ensure that we have adequate supplies. And for other medications such as chloroquine, where people are thinking maybe it might work, we need to actually have a stock mm. taking because whether or not you know, physicians prescribe it on an outpatient basis really should depend on whether or not they're available stocks because for emerging medications, we do need to reserve them for people who are ill in the hospital. But if there's an adequate right. supply, we then can try and use them more for the general public. But we have to know what the supply is, and we just don't know that right now. Uh, try and get one more in here. Ken writes on Facebook, uh, he says, I noticed the three cars ahead of me at the traffic light were each stopped about six feet apart. Is that taking social distancing too far? I think when you're in the car, it's, it's not a concern. <laughs> I, I think that you can maintain a regular distance uh, uh, with a car, absolutely. Good. Uh, and I had to get this in, a tiger at the Bronx Zoo testing positive for coronavirus. Uh, a, that's absolutely surprising. B, why are they testing a tiger? And does this have any impl implications for domestic cats? Um, are they more liable to contract it and pass it on? So we do know that dozens of different types of animals can get the family of coronavirus from, from camels to bats to, to civet cats and birds. And so we're now seeing mm. in this outbreak domestic pets such as dogs and cats getting the coronavirus. So I think as far as the action, your viewers should make sure they wash their hands before preparing the animal's food and they don't let the animal lick their face. Now on, on the tiger, that's a bit of a puzzle because there's no shortage of tigers in, in American zoos. But but uh, I guess somehow they were able to get access to the tests. All right. We'll have to leave it there. Dr. Kate Zelenko, uh, doctor, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Appreciate your uh, expertise.